Thanks to the City of Brimbank across our neighbourhood and the world, Soul Dive with AD, Rashani and Lydia on Brimbank Live on Live FM. Hi and welcome to Soul Dive uh, on Brimbank Live's Live FM where your hosts are Dungwut, Lydia and Rashani. Uh, and today we have a really exciting show. Um, it's one of our go-tos, one of our usuals, one of our fun ones uh, of Am I the Asshole? Uh, segments. And um, these stories are all semi-COVID related, you know, just sticking with the theme the past year or so. Um, So we'll get right into it. Okay, I'll read out the first story. So it says, um, I am, I'm a single female, aged 40 with no kids or pets. I'm a pretty successful house flipper. Right before COVID hit, I finished renovating a large house in Connecticut and couldn't find a buyer. So I decided to move in myself for the time being as I was, as I am originally from Georgia and it's not a great place to be in right now given the spread of COVID. I own and live in the house by myself even though I originally built it for a large family. I'm pretty uh, solitary uh, and like to have my own space. The issue is my sister's family is in the process of being kicked out of their house because they can no longer afford their finances due to COVID. She, her husband, and four children need somewhere to stay. My mother suggested that my house was perfect for her family, and I laughed her off. However, my sister showed up this morning with a U-Haul truck full of stuff and her kids, and her kids in tow, ready to move in, and I was super (laughs) confused. After some arguing, I told my sister that my house was unavailable to her right now because I have no interest in living with her large family of six, um, with all four kids being under five as well. She has a month left in, uh, on her lease at her current house, and I suggested that she look for rentals she could afford. She left extremely angry and told my parents. My family went on Facebook to call me selfish for having such a big empty space and leaving her out in the dust. In addition, though I technically own this house, I don't plan on living here forever, and I still need to sell the house a couple of months down the line because it's now because it's how I make a living. Her kids are young and messy and will mess up the house, which needs to remain in sellable condition. So am I the asshole for not helping her out? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of components there. Yeah, um, right. Wait, I know I read it, but mm-hmm. just to make sure. So was the sister trying to move into the house she's not staying at currently or trying to move in to the rental property or to the house that she had just flipped and is staying at at the moment? she's she's just yeah she's just flipped this house and she's staying in it and then her sister was trying to move into this newly put together house okay along with moving in with her yeah like she owns this this second house of hers it seems like this is her second home it's more of an investment sort of property but Mm -hmm. she has the luxury of moving there just to escape COVID you know what I mean which says to me that You know, I don't think like um, money is a huge issue for this woman necessarily, Mm -hmm. but of course she's, she's 40 and alone and has lived a life like in a certain way for a really long time and obviously Mm -hmm. likes her space, but Hey, Mm -hmm. let's get into it. I probably feel the same way. Um, I wouldn't have the heart to push anyone away, Mm -hmm. but in my heart, I'll be really annoyed because I like my own space as well. So she was courageous enough to be like, no, sorry, mate. What do you that's think? Fair. You can look at it. Yeah, that's one way to look at it because her life would undoubtedly change, you know, like having six new people in the house, it, they would completely take over the space. But I don't know, just to sit like this is a crisis. So in times of crisis, what are you willing to forfeit in terms of comfort mm. for the purpose of supporting those around you, you know? Yeah. Mm. I mean, yeah, I do hear you when you say that we are in a crisis and particularly like in America, you know, things are mm. really, really bad there. Um, yeah. But I think that it, doesn't hurt to maybe communicate and ask the permission, which her sister <laughs> didn't do. She, this girl is just rocking up with her U-Haul, with her kids, like with her furniture. Like yeah. you can't do that. Like even <laughs> if you're really close to your sister, I think that a conversation needs to be had. You cannot just rock I up. She, like she took the mom and the mom's words as like you know executive, like say like final authority because the mom's the one that said to the sister who has the house that right. she this arrangement should happen and as soon as that conversation happened sounds like the sister just got that van. <laughs> she was ready she, yeah she hired that van <laughs> she packed her bags the, <laughs> she was on her way 
but she also has one more month left of the rent. So why did she pack up and leave early um, to come through? You know? I think she couldn't. I think she's being expelled. So she's actually being uh, okay. pushed out of her house because she's she has one month to leave. Board. Exactly. Right. And I think um, that's why I'm saying this is a unique situation at the same time. So clearly the sister's, you know, desperate. I'm not saying that the way she's gone about it is okay, but mm-hmm. I do believe that um, the sister should maybe be a little bit more open to helping her out in some way because mm-hmm. there's no alternative. Right. It's not like I'll help you with a, a bit of funds. It's just mm-hmm. like. And she doesn't yeah. need to do that, but it's she's just kind of saying, go and just find something cheaper. Clearly yeah. unable right. to. Yeah. And it could be a temporary situation as well. Like what if you let them stay with you and, you know, uh, disturb your comfort a little bit mm. for a month or so? Yeah. It won't kill you. It's doing kind of the right thing. Like you said, it is a crisis. Um, yeah. Perhaps yeah, I think there's it, more yeah. context to them because I th- I found um her comment about the kids um being messy a bit of a like a scapegoat comment because there's like, other things between both those sisters that maybe is there that that are coming into play in exactly because I'm like how bad her. are yeah. these kids? Yes, kids are messy, but would that be four the... under five though? Come yeah, on, they will flip the house <laughs> upside down. <laughs> That, that's true okay look for a house that she's trying to sell in a few months yeah. it's not an ideal situation but no. COVID isn't ideal either I get that I think that I feel like if the sister had communicated this properly then this person writing this would have the means because obviously like obviously she has other houses that she flips and she might know rental properties around like she would be able to help her sister out but I think that the way her sister's gone about it has not been great and therefore mm-hmm. she's kind of closing herself up to helping her sister at all because she just feels like her sister was bold enough to barge into like her rental property and think mm. and assume that she was able to move in. Um, but I think that like, obviously this girl has connections, like she'll know rental properties around the area or, or be able to help her sister out. Um, but I think her sister's gone about this in the wrong way, which has made her just not yeah, want to shut buy. down to the whole idea. Yeah. yeah I yeah. believe that. I think it was the lack of communication and consideration to yeah ask yeah. and it said here so I don't know if it was literally the next day after the conversation she had with her mother that the this mom, happened yeah. or whether there was a bit of time in between that um yeah I think it was just shocking she didn't have any time to kind of prepare mentally yeah for don't this, rock up know? to people's houses like that like yeah. don't okay. just for that yeah. fact alone I guess it spoils the whole thing but really I would be I would have more things to say otherwise about the sister who seems pretty unwilling to help if it wasn't for the fact that the sister rocked up, you know, Mm. without communicating. Because I think in times of crisis and struggle, who do you lean on if not your sister, you know? Um, And, yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean that she needs – I guess she chose the way in which her sister could help her, which wasn't necessarily right. You know, having a conversation – could have given the sister the, the choice to actually mm-hmm. come up with the solution herself and she didn't give her that right and I can mm-hmm. understand that that in itself would annoy the sister enough that she probably doesn't want to help at all but mm-hmm. still it's a crisis you know your sister no. who has four children under five is is about to get kicked out from her from her house and I think that sort of there's an urgency to that which kind mm-hmm. of has translated in the way that she's gone about things to look for a solution so yeah I also understand understand the other side. Do you right. know what I mean? And the stress that um, perhaps the other sister's feeling, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, like, yeah. what what's the mum out here doing? Like, she That's obviously what I was like gonna ask where's the like, mum at? She's communicated this to the sister, and obviously been like, "Yep, move into your sister's house. Mm-hmm. She's got like a, a full house that you and your kids can like um, refuge in." But like, why couldn't the mother? <laughs> communicate with yeah uh, exactly like I just think that I don't know there's obviously communication issues within this family um, (laughs) that they need to be sorting out because yeah I I don't know if like and even like the mum could have at least given a pre-warning um and Mm. been like hey like your sister's on her way like don't get freaked out She's got like all her stuff and she really has nowhere to go. Like I just think that like more she's got all her stuff. (laughs) She's ready to move in. Including her children. And her husband will be there later at dinner. Oh god! Um, you're just tuning in. You're listening to Soul Dive on Brimbank Lives Live FM with your hosts AD Lydia and Rishani, and we are doing some "Am I the Asshole?" segments from Reddit. Um, right now, we're talking about a couple of sisters with uh, communication issues um, in times of crisis, and um, it's 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 a bit of a tough one. It's a mm. bit divided. I think. I don't think. I think this is one of our first times that we've been not unanimous in how we feel about the situation. Mm. Look, I also 
feel as if um, I still want to take her back to her initial description, which was I'm a 40 year old single woman, Mm. no kids, no pets. I like my space. You know, she really emphasized that she likes her space. And Mm -hmm. so despite the fact that she has uh, like this to lean on, which is the fact that her sister went about it in a wrong way, I still feel like a big like part of this reason or this no comes from the fact that she just likes to she likes her space you know she Mm -hmm. just doesn't want anyone interrupting the way she's lived for so so long um and they're literally two ends of the spectrum one with four kids one with none and I think yeah she's her her peace will be disturbed more than anything yeah Yeah. I think yeah I think that you're right there in saying that that is probably a large part of why she doesn't want them moving in and there are other factors you know the fact that the kids are messy or the fact that um you know her sister went about it the wrong way but Mm. I think at the end of the day she does want her space and she's entitled to her space um and I think that like there were probably ways of her still having her space and still helping her sister out um Mm. but I just feel like she felt backed into a corner um, and she's like now on the defense. Um, True. But yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like, I don't blame her for just not wanting to go from being alone and single and having her space to then having like a whole like huge family just join her mm. in this like <laughs> property. And knowing COVID, like you could be, it might be a temporary thing now, but it could turn into a more permanent thing because, yeah. you know, you don't know what's going to happen if they're going to be like um, going into a lockdown of some sort. Mm. So I think that she's probably very apprehensive about how this situation will turn out because it could easily be permanent Mm. that's that's and i I know i always take it back i always seem to make it like a cultural cultural thing (laughs) cultural because i'm like if this happened any like that's the thing um with with ethnic families like we're made to feel guilty Mm -hmm. ever even thinking you know or feeling like i just want to be alone i want my own space like how dare you turn family away how dare you turn mm. someone in need away it's just this idea that we've been mm-hmm. uh conditioned yeah. to to believe and and feel and um so I feel this lady but as well I, I have been conditioned, been conditioned as well conditioned. so like I feel we like have. we've been conditioned like I I personally I am this 40 year old that's you relate to her. Oh, I okay, her I'm just my space, own space. <laughs> I just hate being in crowds yeah. I, and I stayed with my family um, a little bit um, last year for about a month or, or two. Yeah. Um, sleeping in bed with my grown ass cousin as well, two adults. Yeah. It was just, <laughs> and then there was like school age kids just making noise yeah. and just, just so much going, going on. on. Yeah. See, the thing is, I think, it, you know how we mentioned in our previous episode, that collectivist mentality. Mm, yes. Yeah. I think it's, it's yes, we can look at it as, um, you know, we've been conditioned, but I also see it as it's just culture, you know, it's mm. it's embedded in our culture to yeah. to look after okay. each other. Because, embedded, not yes. conditioned, embedded. Yeah. That's yeah. a better way to describe it. It's still conditioning. <laughs> it's it's see, just there. And you're yeah, made we've, to feel we've like all been crap, society. Yeah. you know, if, if um, you felt anything else, if you do feel yes. individualistic in any way, whether it's yeah. your money, whether it's your home, you're supposed yeah. to share um, yeah. and feel good about it, you know, feel yeah. loving and, and giving like you want to do it. But yeah. yeah, there was, yeah, obviously in this situation, there was an assumed um, idea yeah. that the sister was going to be fine with it. The mom thought it was fine. The sister who brought mm-hmm. her kids and her furniture and her husband thought it was fine. So. <laughs> I don't know maybe they just felt like culturally and maybe they are from like an ethnic background that it, it was all good like I'm moving into you and that's fine yeah <laughs> yeah but um yeah man yeah. I wouldn't want to be AD's sister <laughs> she's kicking me out <laughs> but, like sorry I don't kick anybody out I wouldn't I be just, rocking up but you'll like be that. mad about it you take them in and be like like yeah, petty and bitter some about type it of way. I'll be resentful yeah. right. like oh, I'm yeah, never yeah. petty but I'm just gonna I just in my head and in my heart I'm just like frustrated yeah you know, in my head frustrated. My yeah, yeah. Well, I, I always um, wonder with these scenarios what culture are these people. You know what yeah. I mean? So that's yeah, because it really it. does shape the yeah. way that you think and act about things. Absolutely. So um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, who do you think is the asshole in this scenario? Do you feel like the oh. lady who turned her sister away Ooh. is is an asshole? I think she is half and half. Like she's entitled mm. to feeling the way she feels. Yeah. yeah. Um. But with COVID going on, with such mm. a crisis, with yes. her sister being kicked out of her home, 
mm. you yeah. know, for financial issues. Yeah. And remember that, how bad COVID is in the yes. States. It's running yeah. rampant, literally. Mm-hmm. So yeah. to have a, such a large space is actually a luxury in this time when yeah. people are just, you know, the, the death rates in the United States are crazy. And yeah. so it's like, um, to what extent are you, um, you know, exposing your family, your sister yeah. and your family to more risk by not allowing them to come in? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I just yeah. think that comfort is one thing and she's yes. completely yeah. entitled to everything that's hers but I still yeah. feel like she's lacking a little bit of heart you know yeah. Yeah. yeah I think that yeah and given the context of the situation as you said she should definitely you know she, she's entitled to be upset about it and entitled mm. to maybe be like well I don't want you moving in here but like I can help you out in some other way because exactly. she, yeah. she definitely has a means to help her sister out so I think that right. she can find other ways uh, of solving this issue and I think in that sense she is the asshole but um, <laughs> in the sense of her wanting her entitlement <laughs> (laughs) Um, and her own space because she (laughs) is able to have her own space and help her sister out I think yeah yeah, she should definitely do so yeah yeah okay so I think I would also say that in this case she was an asshole yeah we we get her yeah yeah we you're an asshole but we get you we understand why you're an asshole yeah done I agree with that (laughs) all right you're listening to soul dive on Brimbank lives live fm with your host Rashani AD and Lydia and after the break we'll be jumping into another scenario. With thanks to the city of Brimbank across our neighborhood and the world, Soul Dive with AD, Rashani and Lydia on Brimbank Live on Live FM. Welcome back to Soul Dive on Brimbank Lives Live FM with your hosts, AD, Lydia and Rashani. Um, and today we're talking uh, about some, or well, we're reading out some stories um, from Am I the Asshole uh, Reddit segment, COVID related. Um, and just before that, one of our stories, uh, you know, was a bit of a half and half. We came to a conclusion, but we also understood why someone might be mm-hmm. feeling the way they were feeling um so Rashani do you want mm-hmm. to read us the next one yes okay so this one is titled am I the asshole for refusing to RSVP to my sister's wedding because I'm required to write an application essay just to attend okay so this is the description So my sister is getting married next February, destination wedding no less. I have doubts whether this wedding is actually going to happen with the pandemic and everything, but she's totally set on moving forward. Anyway, because of the pandemic, her original venue has made her cut down on guests because they're cutting capacity by half. As a result, she's sending out re-invites that asks everyone to RSVP again. But in order to figure out who to invite and who to cut, she's asking all confirmed guests to submit a two 250-word essay to two questions. The gist is that they'll use these essays to choose who can come and who cannot come based on people's enthusiasm. (laughs) People who don't write the essay (laughs) at all will be automatically disqualified. I just feel really insulted by all of this. The questions aren't even pandemic-related. It's broad topics like why do you still (laughs) want to celebrate this day with us and what will attending our wedding mean to you specifically? So she's blatantly looking for people to kiss us and tell her why they really want to go. Anyways, I told her in advance that I'm not writing 500 words on why I need to attend her wedding, spend my own money on plane tickets and hotels and buy her a present. This has really rubbed her the wrong way and my parents the wrong way as well. She said that to keep things fair, if I don't fill out the RSVP correctly, I won't be saved a spot. I said, fine with me. Then my parents said, I don't show up. Then my parents said, if I don't show up, I'm going to be the the big troublemaker to all our relatives. So I should just write an essay. Am I the asshole if I stay stubborn on this? I'm really annoyed at the thought of spending thousands and coming home to quarantine, but I will not belt out a 500 word essay on how this is totally my choice. Am I the asshole? Um, so there's also an edit here. It says the sister has framed these essays as quote unquote surveys, but there's <laughs> a word limit requirement. So if you don't reach it on the Google forms, you can't even submit it. Parents think this is perfectly reasonable and even nice because my sister is letting everyone have the chance to attend. Oh, the chance. She's not letting everyone have the chance to attend. Why don't you just pick Suddenly um, she's become something out of a hat and, you know, whoever gets gets well, um, the number right or 
picking up the shortest stick or whatever like why the essays I really thought about this one I'm like Mm. what's going on in this woman's mind (laughs) let's really try and get in yes I'm just like okay I could really understand this if you valued every single one of your um, like invitees or whatever it is this mm-hmm. equally. And then now you've, you really, you're really struggling, but it's just yeah. like, surely there's, you know, surely there's a sort of um, hierarchy in some sense. I mean, the nuclear family in itself should just be a given. I don't think the nuclear family. <laughs> your mom has to live like out an essay. The immediate family, the yeah. immediate family should not have to write anything. They shouldn't even be having to, uh or they shouldn't even be on the firing line you know? on the, exactly on the firing line and that's yeah. the thing I think I think she's also been put in a very tough situation you know having to cut down your wedding by half when you've already sent out the invitations I think is really tough you know mm-hmm. and she's probably really just trying to be fair and diplomatic in her mind she's trying to you know put in some parameters you know so that yeah. she can figure this out because otherwise she's just left to picking but it's yeah. just like what what are you judging on enthusiasm and how I, yeah how I feel like express- yeah I just I hear what you're saying in terms of you know it is really difficult and obviously COVID has um thrown this scenario over to a lot of people who are getting married but I feel like wanting an essay from people is she wants to be validated right which I get it is her wedding day but I just feel like, okay, first of all, real talk, like some people are really great at writing and some people aren't like, I'm a writer. I'm really great at being convincing on paper, mm-hmm. but I might've only like met you and your husband like twice compared to like relatives who are super close to you, who might not be able to be all that convincing in an essay. And you're really mm-hmm. going to choose me to come to your wedding versus someone who's <laughs> known you and being there. Like, I feel like it's not a game show. Do you know what I mean? Like, this isn't like a game show as to who's going to come to my wedding. Like, Who's going to write the most compelling essay? Right. It's like people don't need a chance. Like it's your wedding, so you decide. You don't need to, in the process, just feel validated and have people um, tell you how great you are and tell you why they want to be there. Obviously, everybody Mm. wants to be there, and you, at one stage, wanted everyone to be there. And as you said, Lydia, I feel like there is a hierarchy. You're able to make a decision. Just Mm. make it. Don't. No one wants to write a 250 word essay. Like that's two of them. Yeah, yeah, five hundred words. If you know, because what if there's someone who hasn't got a uni degree, doesn't write much, and you know, just wants to write two words saying you're such an amazing soul it's not enough you can't even submit the form Lydia. that's, that's what it. i'm saying so that's where it becomes <laughs> a bit out. unreasonable you know because it's like i can see what you're trying to do here you're trying to be fair like in in i yeah. do think that to a degree you could say she's trying to get she's trying to be validated but on what on the other hand i could see that she just really doesn't know how to go yeah. about this if that makes yeah, sense like canceling I mean, people yeah. about canceling it's people. a half and half thing yeah like um yeah i agree with rishani that um she this is unnecessary, but I also <laughs> agree with you, Lydia, that <laughs> that um, she can't make a decision. And I'd be really stressed as well. Like if I had invited all these people, who do I uninvite? Mm, yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, and like, it's, it's, yeah. it's probably more, it's probably more her worth, worthwhile being a bit more assertive in this situation. And like Roshani said, just kind of just making a decision, you know what I mean? Sitting with herself and yeah. figuring it out. Um, yeah. Which could cause because I guess she's putting it in their hands now yeah at the same time it's now back in hers because she has to judge (laughs) she has to read all these essays true she has to judge them and be like crap sorry you can't come yeah and then I feel like now you're you risk actually losing friendships because people are not coming based off their responses not not just sorry you know, like COVID happened. So mm-hmm. something out of my yeah. control happened yeah. and I'm doing this as a result. Now yeah. it's back within her control. She yeah. can judge. <laughs> exactly. And I think, I, that, um, I think that like a point was made in um, the description about the fact that these questions are not COVID related. I feel like if she were to maybe be like, hey, you know, I'm going to have to cut people. Let me know what your situation is. You know, perhaps there are people that are really far away and that can't fly over and you can cut those people out. Or there mm. are people who have, um, you know, their kids are not invited to the wedding and they have no one to look after their kids because of COVID, cut them out. Like, I feel like there's probably a more mature way of going about this given the circumstance of COVID. But I feel like instead of actually taking that into account, she's just like, give me an essay about why. I'm so great and you want to be there. Like, I just want to be a taste. Yeah. A hundred words. It is very distinct. A hundred words. 250 is really excessive. Yeah, like yeah. I thought I was just gonna come, dress up, eat some food, enjoy. You my don't have night. to work for an invite. Like yeah, that's no sense. Now I have to sit, like, submit an application. <laughs> Damn. 
I don't know. It's I really crazy. Don't know. Um, so the I, nuclear I, family not being like included is what really gets me because I'm yeah. like, you know, if you were, if you struggled with your friends or something like that and you, yeah. and you wanted to do something, okay. But really the fact that you're willing to drop your, you know, it just shows that you, you do want to be maybe validated a little bit. Yeah. Or, yeah. 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 And, you know, I'm, I'm just going to say this some, um, <laughs> because the even the parents are on board yeah. with it. Yeah, right. I think it's nice. Like the parents are like, what a lovely idea. If I tried to do this, <laughs> nobody, none of my family would write a damn essay. They'd be like, girl, that's you've got some issues, sort it out. Like, like, are like, are like, you okay? We, that's not even a thing. Are theme, you looking like... for validation? You... No, just mentally, emotionally, Lydia, are you all right? <laughs> You're doing okay, Lydia. Because <laughs> they would just be like, what? Like we can send you, you know, um, those sticky notes with affirmations on them. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, like but I'm not going to sit down and write a freaking 250 word essay to two questions oh, about God. how excited I am to attend your wedding. Like, I'm excited about my own damn wedding. I, I'm, I'm not that excited. Like, what's going to happen right. for me? That am I getting paid to go? <laughs> what's go? Why do I desperately need to be there? Right. Because yeah, because the reason I'm coming to your wedding is based off everything that's happened up until today. It mm-hmm. should not be based off the things that are, you know, about to happen, such as the um how great my my writing is. You know, yeah. my yeah, my piece. Yeah, Yeah. I just feel like, and also, like, really, imagine if everybody hands an essay in and they're all amazing essays. What are you going to do? Yeah. What are you going to, like, I don't think she's thought about this. I think she just wants to keep these essays and be like, look at all these family and friends that love me so much. Mm -hmm. Like, it's very Mm -hmm. self-indulgent, I think. Yeah, and I think (laughs) eventually it's going to backfire. (laughs) Definitely going to backfire. I think I'm going to do this, not for a wedding, but just 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 in general. Like, if you want to come to my birthday, once a month, I need you guys to write a 250 word piece about why you should remain my friend. Right. Yeah, why do do a monthly cut, AD, of like. (laughs) (laughs) If you're just tuning in, guys, you're listening to Soul Dive or Brimbank Lives Live FM with your hosts, AD, Lydia, and Rishani. And we are doing Am I the Asshole segments. Uh, this one, it's quite a strange one. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. of all four people wanting validation and um, a mentor of mine told me the other day that I should have a party mm-hmm. where I tell all my friends to write all these nice things about me. Like, not just to me personally, but yeah. to everybody. That mm-hmm. was the advice. And have like a all about me party. Like we all deserve an all about me party. Right. Mm. People say all these nice things about you and then you say really nice things about yourself and then you mm. just celebrate yourself. Yeah. You know, everyone celebrates you. Um, so I get that. I get that. Yeah. Like everybody <laughs> needs a little validation in their lives. You know? Yeah, a little. I feel like, yeah. And that's sometimes. a lovely idea I feel you can do with your friends um, and you can kind of have that like conversing of giving mm. compliments and validating each other. But I feel like this is a wedding and this is like, <laughs> in this context it's very competitive yeah <laughs> <laughs> might as well put like a marathon race you know and whoever wins gets in yeah um, I mean yeah. I'm worried I'm actually just worried for her and her wedding and who's gonna actually and like what's gonna happen yeah. that sister's not she's not she's not writing nothing the, it yeah. sounds like the sister was a little bit resentful about having to pay to go to begin with there might be other things I think there are other things at, yeah yeah just no, but I think, it's, yeah. it's not even resentful like obviously going to like wedding, I'm already annoyed for, for the fact takes, that yeah it takes money it takes time it takes all yeah stuff. you gotta buy it yeah new outfit um she's saying she has to buy a plane ticket so I don't mm-hmm. know where she's going for that wedding yeah I think the point is she's, yeah, she's already putting towards going. um, And then on top of that, she has to now write and convince her. She's already shown her effort by being willing to. Yeah, I understand that. I think, I think, yeah, I think the lady is a bit of an asshole. I'm going to say, I'm going to say it. I think she's a little bit. purely for making the nuclear family having to do as well. I mean, I wonder if mom and dad. Oh, the mum thinks it's a lovely idea. The mum's already <laughs> drafting her essay as we speak. <laughs> She's typing away. She's typing away. But that's the thing, yeah. It's the nuclear family part. And it's also the part where they have to reach the 250 word count, right? Yeah. Like, what is that? <laughs> Not even the 10% minus or plus. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Oh yeah. Does it make sense? Um yeah, I don't think she really thought this through. Um, <laughs> she probably thought, you know, at that time that it was a good idea to, as a way to cull people. Mm-hmm. Um, and But then you guys made that great point, and I didn't even think about it, that she has to do the judging as well. So, a lot of time and effort. 
100. we're trying to save her the hassle just like yeah. just start cutting people just get a dartboard try, like there are other ways there are other ways to pick people um this is why assertiveness is important in certain contexts and some people really struggle with it just kind of being assertive with themselves or with a situation or with people you know mm. um it's important to kind of be decisive and just trust your self and go yeah. with it because the alternative is sometimes you create more mess and this is what she seems to be doing yeah. Yeah. And I think if she started uh, disinviting people, people would be really understanding because of that time, Mm -hmm. you know, and be like, I'm really sorry. I can't have uh, many people at all. So I'm going to keep it small. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think people will understand versus them having to like write a whole essay and yeah. And then get rejected based off that (laughs) rather than after after putting in the effort, you still get rejected. Like exactly. That would be terrible yeah oh sometimes we've got to have a bit of foresight oh <laughs> I, don't know. I hope goodness. we get an update and actually we'll check that one back yeah. again yeah. <laughs> um is that is that a thing do people update yeah sometimes, sometimes they, they come do. back yeah. yeah sometimes it's like three updates they'll just be back because uh, yeah to let the people know what's mm-hmm. going on yeah okay all right I think I have to keep an eye out for that one too I feel like the sister's probably not oh she's probably gonna get invited at the end of it all even mm. though she um she's resistant to this thing um that she has mm-hmm. to do I think she'll get invited regardless at the end of it all because the sister's gonna realize how stupid yeah. this is yeah mm. and I uh, honestly I feel like not many people are actually going to submit an essay she's gonna have to just oh for sure there'll be some people who just laugh anyway yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. Laugh. yeah. Just look at so, <laughs> like it's insane it's insane with decision making i say mm. you're listening to soul dive on brimbank lives live fm with your hosts ad rishani and lydia and we are doing am i the assholes more right after the break with thanks to the city of brimbank across our neighborhood and the world soul dive with ad rishani and lydia on brimbank live on live fm Welcome back to Soul Dive on Brimbank Lives Live FM. We're your hosts, AD Lydia and Rishani. Um, and we have a third and last um, Am I the Asshole story for you. Lydia, do you want to kick that one off? Let's go. All right, brace yourselves, guys, because this one, <laughs> this one is crazy. All right, this one says, Am I the asshole for blaming my fiance for infecting others with COVID? My fiancé, 24-year-old female, and I, 25-year-old male, were engaged for almost a year, and our wedding was going to be in June. In January slash February, she caught a respiratory illness, which made her miss 13 days of work and spend five days in the hospital, but appeared to have made a full recovery. She and I are both very active members in our church. Immediately after all of her symptoms were gone, she started participating in activities and showing up at meetings several times a week again. We had conflict over her resumed participation because I had a suspicion it was COVID and therefore she should sit out another two weeks. But she thought it was just a very bad flu and now that the symptoms were gone, her schedule could go back to normal. I also suspect that she was feeling guilted slash pressured into coming back ASAP by the pastor's wife, who was clearly not happy about the prolonged absence. We didn't see each other all of March and April due to everyone being in quarantine, but I got a phone call from my fiancé during that time. Oh, you got a phone call from your fiancé. <laughs> um, she said she just got text- tested and, I, and admitted I was right that she had before, that what she had before was COVID. I responded with, I told you so, and said that she should have listened to me earlier, that she was irresponsible, that she potentially infected the entire congregation, etc. Later, after finding out that several others in the church had tested positive, I texted her three weeks before our wedding and called off the entire thing, saying that it's her fault they got sick. Several of our mutual friends have told me that she's absolutely devastated that I called off our engagement but deep down agrees with me that she was at fault for not anticipating that she could have had the coronavirus. A few people have told me that I was being unreasonable because because testing was not available in Jan to February and COVID-19 was hardly on the radar in the US back when she had the illness. Am I the asshole here? And then there's an edit. She had an antibody test done, which is what confirmed that the past illness was COVID-19. 
and then info I called off the wedding for good <laughs> because I was angry that she didn't agree with me earlier when I said that she probably had COVID whoa damn this is the f- relationship there's breaking stuff this. there's so much but the first thing that stood out is that fragile ego man damn mm-hmm. what just because she like because I what the first thing I have to just say because is you yeah is it's very yeah, common for two people to have two different convictions about something before they're able to objectively mm-hmm. understand that thing do you know what I mean and in this mm-hmm. case they didn't have the opportunity to so they were just working off their convictions and what felt right to them but just because she didn't do what he thought was right at the time with and he wasn't val- like he didn't know whether it was doesn't mean that you know what I mean you just gotta call off a wedding mm. but hey she doesn't warrant a uh yeah yeah that's yeah. the thing I, I feel like I hear you on that because I feel like he does always want to be right like in this scenario the fact that he was right isn't even enough for him like he needs to take it a step further and be like because of this we're now ending our engagement which makes like was the engagement um or this relationship even solid to begin with that this is going to be like um the reason why you're calling it off and maybe he is someone who likes to be validated and likes to be right and um wants people to know that he's right and this is him just like exerting that um Mm. and I guess like and to be honest like obviously I understand you know we are all trying to be COVID safe um and there are people out there that are quite careless and do go out and don't don't care about the symptoms they may have or anything like that. Um, given the context of the situation where, you know, she was in hospital, um, she had gotten better or or she thought, you know what well, I mean? The symptoms and, had gone. So yeah. Right. Her, yeah. And I think yeah. that um during this time there wasn't testing. You know, I think the context would be a lot different if it was happening yeah. nowadays where people had testing, um, if she still had symptoms and was going out. Like I don't think it was malicious the fact that she was going back mm. to work and going out. Um and I think that maybe and she does seem remorseful and she did say, like, I understand mm. you were right. Um, but I just think that like you're calling off the engagement I think there must be more to the story there must be more Mm. to this relationship and this might have been the last straw for him and he's just using this as an excuse Um, Mm. exactly yeah Um, I was gonna say um, oh you made you made a point just before but it flew away Um, Mm. but it's a lot of people took COVID really really seriously and there were a lot of people that were really really careless as well Mm. So I don't know the emotions behind the story just from reading it. Mm -hmm. But what I feel is that potentially this guy took COVID really, really seriously, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, and was afraid and told her what she needed to do. And because COVID is Mm life-threatening, he's really, really upset at the fact that people have been put in danger in their church, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, And... Yeah, maybe there's also a little bit of him uh, being right that, you know, plays at the back of his mm-hmm. head that he needs to be right all of the time. And that's what pushed this extreme reaction um, to, to being right, to, yeah. uh, you know, her having COVID. Yeah. But, yeah, I do think it's, it is a bit extreme um, to call off the wedding. But I also think maybe he was really mad at the fact that she just didn't take it Mm, seriously. Yeah. Um, Even though it was really early on. And I believe January, February, it wasn't really talked about. It was around March that things really. Yeah. 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 She didn't take something seriously, not because she understood the context of the situation. She just, she just thought it was okay. Do you know what I mean? And he had a different conviction about it at the time. Yes. And objectively, she didn't actually have the information or the knowledge to know that she was potentially Mm. really putting people at risk. So my question is, what type of relationship do you guys have here? Like, it sounds like you're just, you're too quick to be against each other rather than to try and understand one another. Like, relationship. Yeah, and it just like if this is what it took to to break this relationship, then I mean, this wasn't a solid foundation. It could not have been solid Mm, to begin with. And it sounds as if you know, given that context of the church relationship, they obviously don't live together. They actually spent a period of time apart, so maybe they're you know waiting to live together. Maybe they um, aren't that close. I don't know. Maybe Mm. do you know what I mean? Maybe they're they're doing it very traditional, and so he didn't really get to know her. I I I don't Mm. know, but all I can say is like. Um, 
unless he 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 genuinely believes that she is a bit reckless or negligent right um yeah. and that he's seen that behavior in different scenarios yeah I just think that this is so extreme mm. call off your wedding because yeah. your fiance infected someone without knowing yeah whoa honestly yeah. Um, and, and think, it could yeah. happen to anybody as well That's like people could have uh, been infected from elsewhere and brought mm-hmm. it into the church it might yes. have not been her who infected anybody mm-hmm. um and she might have been when she was symptom free she might have been already done with COVID COVID mm-hmm. might have gone away by that yeah. time so they don't really know yeah it's not 100 percent. all they know is that she did have COVID she might have had it when she was already in the hospital yes dealing yeah. with the respiratory illness have, yeah so um I think there's a lack of understanding and sympathy or compassion there from Definitely. the fiance yeah. um I don't know if like what the motivation is I mean they say they go to church heaps so I don't know if it's some religious thing going on at the back of his mind like she as my wife is supposed to listen to me you know I don't I don't mm-hmm. know I'm the man of the house <laughs> mm-hmm. um yeah you never know you never yeah. know what from where he's actually coming because it does yeah. really sound like you know there's this emphasis that she just didn't listen to me when I yeah. thought it, you know that what I mean? seems like the main thing and I think exactly. that obviously the fact that people were impacted by this and caught COVID is an element but I think the main thing that he's mad about is the fact that I was right you mm. didn't listen to me and you should listen to me because even the fact that now she's saying that she does feel bad and she sees where he was at and why he didn't want her to you know go back to work and go and do this it still seems like the main point for him is the fact that she didn't listen to me and therefore this marriage can't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, maybe it's been a buildup of things and he just didn't know how to get out. So this was like a great excuse, you know? Be like, I'm done I think with so. you. Yeah, I think the last so. straw. Because yeah. if Definitely I loved that. someone, no, no way is that going to be the thing. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, and then especially when you actually, I mean, COVID is, the reality of COVID is very different um, yeah. in the States and this could be back there, but it's not even serious enough, say here, in terms of the danger that it poses to the average person for, mm-hmm. for me to, um, you know, believe that whoever infected someone is, comp- you know, is, is ridiculously negligent like yeah 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 I just think that yeah I don't have yeah. much to say he, this he has an agenda he has an agenda yes um, I think so that. too because like from what we know it wasn't so much her reckless behavior it wasn't like she was like I don't care she was going back to work because she was symptom free she had kind of exactly had her time in hospital she thought that she was fine obviously times were different back then in January and February of last year yeah, because no testing no you. testing and, and most people thought that and that was also a time where most people thought that um if you don't have symptoms you don't have it and so yeah she could have been mm-hmm. asymptomatic and gone out but it was not really her fault and it, I don't think it was malicious on her part but I think in his mind it, he was kind of seeing it in a very very like very different way Mm. yeah yeah but that's the type of like mentality that will lead you to divorce very quickly anyway Mm. so it's just like she dodged a bullet yeah (laughs) exactly you know whether she was whether she was the asshole or not um is the question and for me I think you know um we've all done something that didn't 100% follow the COVID protocols at least once during this time you know whether it's go to the shops with someone um that you live with you know during the time where they said only one person out of the house mm-hmm. type thing or going for um exercise for longer than an hour like they said like we've all done something to contradict mm-hmm. these COVID laws um and because especially when it was really early on you know we just I know and you up, like, yeah we didn't have the information the sun, you know the yeah. sun will kill the virus you good right um <laughs> <laughs> you know type thing so yeah. I think she is not the asshole simply because she didn't have all of the information and yeah. she did what she did based on what she knew. Yeah, what she yeah. knew and what she thought. She was feeling better. You know, she had already taken heaps of days off work. Um, she was in the hospital. She was feeling better. So yeah. she genuinely thought that she was up for it. Mm-hmm. She didn't know anything, anything else. Yeah. Um, so what do you think? And, who's the asshole? I think... Well, the question is not who's the asshole, but definitely the husband or the ex-fiance yeah. Yeah. douchebag in this one. <laughs> um, just simply because of the way he's talking, like I yeah. told you. Mm, so those kinds yeah. of uh, tones and, and mm-hmm. words are really condescending and, yeah. and really competitive kind mm. of words. They're not compassionate 
loving exactly. yeah you're my fiance type, type, yeah. type yeah. Thing, yeah. yeah you know yeah, yeah. Exactly. and I think the fact that she was open enough to be like you know what you were right and she obviously has mm. this sense of remorse and compassion there um but he's not giving giving it back so you know because she could have easily been like I'm not telling him that I actually had COVID exactly. uh, I'm just gonna like not say anything because mm. I know that he he was right in this situation and I was wrong but she was like bold enough or she you know had the compassion and the remorsefulness enough to be like actually you were right and and I'm yeah. sorry um, she has all the heart like she yeah. she actually went back to church because she eventually just felt like she was probably away for too long yeah. you know? and she yeah. wanted to help so she, I think her rationale behind going back at that point in time was reasonable because yeah. she had no symptoms yeah. and um like yeah that's what I'm seeing when, when I look at this it's not so much the situation because he can leave he can call off a wedding at any point that's within his right mm. um, but it's just like the heart and the not for this excuse yeah, mm-hmm. that's what I'm saying. It just seems like they're not even compatible. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They, they yeah. seem to think very, very differently. Yeah. Um, they seem to have a different heart posture. I mm-hmm. don't know. It's just, it's, yeah. Because like you said, she has been remorseful. She has openly admitted to um, where she might have been a little bit negligent. Um, and everything was out in the open. It's not as if she did anything with malicious intent. So for her mm-hmm. fiancé to not be able to see that, yeah just empathize even a little bit yeah Yeah. the relationship's just not there so yeah so the advice here is beware of people who openly and unashamedly always tell you i told you so Mm. or try and put you down yeah Um, always just want to be right in a situation yes no matter what yeah i'm not empathetic because they're not the kind of people that you want in your life and that's it you always feel defensive yeah exactly it's really it's really unnecessary language because it's just like no we've we've actually just got to the bottom of this this is is good (laughs) exactly Uh, anyways I think yeah the asshole for the reason Mm. that you you said earlier AD yeah Um, you think the the fiance (laughs) yeah 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 Yeah, the fiance is definitely the douchebag we sympathize with this girl hope she finds Um, a better one yes definitely I mean she goes to church she's doing all the right things she seems like a godly woman (laughs) god-fearing woman I'm sure she'll find a nice (laughs) god-fearing man to love her and and cherish her and appreciate her yeah um so are we all unanimously saying that she's not the asshole she is absolutely not he's a douche yeah Yeah. (laughs) well uh that brings us to the end of our show guys after the break we will go into a COVID recovery segment um, with Neighbourhood Houses, which Rashani kindly interviewed. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, Maybe sure. So um, I was lucky enough to sit down with Alan from um, Westdale Neighbourhood House um, in Brimbank. And um, we discussed all things COVID recovery, what Neighbourhood House is um, putting on and doing in terms of food relief and all the support programs that they have um, going. So, yeah, stay tuned. Beautiful. Very exciting interview. Yes. All right, uh, right after the break, uh, you're listening to Soul Dive on Brimbank Lives Live FM with your host, AD Lashani Lish- and Lydia. <laughs> Latifa? Um, <laughs> <Lisa Lashani. laughs> <Lashani. I'm laughs> <interested. laughs> All right, catch you after the break. With thanks to the city of Brimbank across our neighbourhood and the world, Soul Dive with AD, Rashani and Lydia on Brimbank Live on Live FM. Welcome back to Soul Dive on Brimbank Live's Live FM. We are now joined by Alan Kessler, who is from the Brimbank Neighbourhood House Unit. And we are going to talk all things COVID recovery. Alan, welcome to the show. Hey, Rashani. Thanks for inviting me. No worries. Um, first of all, how are you going um, during this whole COVID situation? We're obviously out of lockdown and Neighbourhood House is um, kind of getting back to some normalcy. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, it's it's been an interesting ride, really, because um, we've been gently getting back into um, bringing our programs back, but we have also, we have a capacity limit that's different. Mm-hmm. Groups who usually have large numbers, we're reducing, and that's been difficult to manage. And everyone has different um, anxieties, I guess, about coming back. And you know, they really—I think people really want to um, see everybody and be yes. social again. But they also have these anxieties around the virus. Um, 
which I, we can all see that's kind of reducing as time goes on without cases in the community. So mm. that's, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And in terms of people coming back, I mean, things are quite different now, as you spoke about the, the capacity limits. Um, what other difficulties have the Brimac community faced during COVID? During COVID, um, they faced a lot of unemployment. Uh, as you probably know, a lot of people out in the West here um, have casualized jobs. So a lot of those jobs um, went, a lot of the jobs in the, in the factories, that they closed down when they had a large number of um, COVID cases there. Um, so there's a lot of unemployment. There's also a lot of people who are either on bridging visas or visas that don't fit into the government criteria for relief. Mm. So a lot of people doing it really tough. They don't have any supplemental income, um, no family to support them. In fact, they're usually supporting their family overseas. Um, yeah. But we definitely had an increase in need for food, um, which is why uh, the Brimbank Neighborhood House Unit decided to have uh, emergency food relief as part of uh, what we offered during that time. So Westvale, where I work, mm. we're the neighborhood yeah. house who actually basically coordinated all of the food relief for Brimbank Neighborhood House Unit. Yeah, amazing. Um, and I guess we'll get we'll get stuck into the food relief um, element of what you guys are doing. So um, you're doing is it weekly relief packages for, for yeah. families? Is that it? Yeah. So during the, the long lockdown last year, um, we started out with having hampers like food hampers and we packed them. And then we just we just realized that it would be nicer to give people a choice. So mm. like food they want it, because we realized people were probably getting them home and, and taking out stuff that we had put in. Yeah. So we set up, because we weren't open, um, so it had some you know really, uh, really good advantages of not being open. We set up like uh, tables with a wide choice of all the food items. And what we would do is let um, families in one at a time um, and they would pick what they needed. So they Amazing. on it, which is great. Um, and we had a staff member um, because we couldn't have volunteers. We had a staff member who went through um, with the family through the whole process. So they mm -hmm. could know someone um, and talk to them about what their other needs might be so they could feel supported and um, yeah. not feel like there's a lot of people who came and got food relief and they had never had to have food relief before. So there's a lot of shame. Mm. So having that staff person with them, um, being met with really friendly um, people, uh, warm and welcoming, it just made people, I think it just really reduced the shame for them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think that when you mentioned having that staff member there, it does kind of build that sense of community, even though people aren't able to come into the centres because they were obviously closed, yeah. but they still were able to have that contact with staff, which I think is, is really, really important. Yeah. It's really important. And, it, and, I, and the staff ourselves too, it was really nice because, you know, most of us were in lockdown as well, but for the food relief, we could come out of lockdown we could see other people. So yeah. like they they were coming into a friendly space because we were also happy because we got to see people um, and um, feel like we were useful in the situation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and in terms of, um, I know Neighbourhood House did a lot of online programs um, during COVID. Can you speak a little bit about um, some of the things that were offered um, and for what kind of groups they were offered to? Sure. Um, we had a lot of programs. It was very interesting watching the pivot, you know, going from mm. something that we only, because we usually only deliver face-to-face -face and yeah. just did this big pivot. Um, there were a lot of programs for children and young people. So with the children, they had um, uh, like nature workshops where they can, you know, someone introduced the different animals. They had um, storytelling playtime. Um, Trisha is probably a better one to ask. She, she designed a lot of those. Um, we had uh, a lot of like parents and child um, yeah. as well. We had mentoring projects for young people, mm. things to support kids and young people at school. Yeah. Then we had yeah. things like our yoga classes for the adults. Um, some of the neighborhood houses uh, 
got their their volunteers to meet online like a zoom chat like we're doing nice so yeah they could feel supported because they would usually come in and see each other so it was a nice mm. thing for them to reduce their isolation during that time yeah, yeah. absolutely and I guess that neighborhood house as a unit were quite adaptive in you know switching yeah. to everything absolutely. online absolutely yeah. look and one of the um I think the unique things about our unit um in particular is that we work right the way through Mm. you know yeah through we were providing classes online the food relief um we also with our food relief during that time we were delivering um food parcels to people as well um mm. we were also working in partnership with different agencies and with the emergency food relief cross council um and across the um agency support agencies across Brimbank. Mm. Um, so we were just working really hard to try to you know, educate, reduce isolation, get the word out there around what COVID is. So yeah, yeah. a lot of uh, a lot of people who didn't really realize at the very beginning what steps we needed to take as a community to reduce the spread. Um, so mm. really hard in that space, recording videos um, in, in different languages by community members um, who speak those languages and who are um, leaders in those communities so that we were able to help um, I think relieve some of the anxiety around the virus mm. as well as um, reduce spread of the virus. Absolutely, yeah. And I know that a lot of people in the neighborhood our space spoke about how during the COVID time, they were actually working more and a lot harder and producing more during that time. So how was yeah. that for you as a unit member? Sure. You know, you must be exhausted and you, you're continuing to go obviously now. Yeah. How Absolutely. how has that been um, for, for a unit and as a staff member? Look, I, I think, I mean, it's true. We've just, it, we have power through and we have probably done more than we were doing before. Um, but we also saw that was really important to hold our community up and be that um, yeah. space for them. Um, for us, like, you know, my team here and I know right around at the other neighborhood houses, you know, we, we try to stop and have a laugh. Mm -hmm. We're really lucky if, if your, my camera is facing my window, you would see we've, we're surrounded by gardens um, yeah. here at Westvale and we've got community gardens as well. So we just get up and go for a walk as well. Try to get some fresh air, um, some laughter, some, you know, break, you know, there's a lot of time. Yeah. You know, if you're feeling overwhelmed, just take a break, stay mm. home, work from home. So, you know, we try to do that to take care of ourselves. Um, we're also lucky because we're with council. We've got a, we're supported with um, counseling if people need it. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. So we were, you know, made sure everybody was aware of that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's really so, great that the people who are supporting the community also have support for them as well. And that's yeah, so important. Yeah, exactly. I was just about to say that because really, I mean, we wouldn't have been any help at all if we weren't making sure we were supported because mm -hmm. You're not going to find someone who's friendly and helpful if we're feeling tired and grumpy and things like that. So yeah, we yeah to keep spirits up. Absolutely. Um, and what does COVID recovery look like for Neighbourhood House um, moving forward? What things do you have planned in the new year and as yeah. things are starting to open? Um, I think mostly what we're trying to do is support community in different ways. So we're looking at um, mental health. Um, so right now we're we're trying to organize um, sort of uh, depression anxiety um, support group uh, yeah. to help people who are feeling uh, just a bit distressed about it all. Um, we've got programs that are educating around employment to get people back into employment and back into innovative employment. So mm. I think a lot of us realized during that time that not every job is secure. Uh, yeah. We have to start thinking about how we work and where we work and what skills we can bring to a workplace. So like Brimbank um, Learning Futures um, is running a lot of uh, workshops around work, getting work ready. Um, the mentoring program is, again is helping um, young people with work and with school, um, mm. bringing in speakers and workshops. Uh, here at Westville, we're trying to run more and more like um, gardening workshops or projects to get people yeah. um, with food sustainability, food security. That's sort of amazing. Thing. Yeah, a lot of things going on and, and hopefully Abled House can continue kind of getting that support and people can, um, you know, stop in and, and see 
what things are being offered, um, how can the community kind of contact or engage with neighbourhood health services if they don't already um, know how to? Um, the best thing to do is look up who your local neighbourhood house is, and you can do that online at the Brimbank City Council website. But also um, the Brimbank neighbourhood houses, we've got an Instagram page, um, which has flyers and uh, pictures of everything we do. And that's BCC neighbourhood houses. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. Instagram, and then there's a um, Facebook page for us as well. And everything will keep you up to date with that. Um, you can also call council 9249-4000 and just um, tell them where you are and ask that you get connected to your local neighborhood house. We're still providing food relief and we're not only um, supplying that through Westvale, but through all of the um, Brimbank community um, centers and neighborhood houses. So we're trying to connect people directly in with their local uh, neighborhood house so that they get support in the programming that they need mm -hmm. closer to home. Amazing, amazing. Well, on behalf of the community, Ellen, we have to thank you for all the amazing work that you and the unit have been doing. And thank you so, so much for um, Thanks, coming and having a chat to us on um, Soul Dive. Thanks so much. Thanks, Shoshani. Thanks so much. With thanks to the city of Brimbank across our neighbourhood and the world, Soul Dive with AD, Rashani and Lydia on Brimbank Live on Live FM. It was a great show today. Thank you everyone for listening in. You were listening to Soul Dive on Brimbank Live's Live FM with your hosts, AD, Rishani and Lydia. And we will see you next time. See ya. Bye. With thanks to the city of Brimbank across our neighbourhood and the world, Soul Dive with AD, Rishani and Lydia on Brimbank Live on Live FM. Okay.